guys, I gotta tell you, it is getting very hard to do this review show now. Raw just keeps sucking more and more each week. I... Uh, my god. Just hit the friggin' opening, will ya? Alright, this show almost made me quit. Now, I've been watching Raw for a long time. I have seen gay weddings. Nothing wrong with gay weddings, but the whole way they used it to screw over Glad, which was kind of funny, not very called for. I have seen necrophilia on Raw. I have seen aggravated assault. I have seen substance abuse. I've seen drugs. I've seen male porn stars. I've seen male cheerleaders. I've seen Mantar. <laughs> Not sure what he is, but I've seen Mantar. And this is the one that almost made me quit. How bad is this show? Well, let's see. We're in Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay, so first of all, Booker T is doing the commentary because last week, my, uh, Mark Henry slammed Jerry Lawler through the announce table. And Michael Cole thought it would be a great idea to randomly blurt out that he had anal bleeding. Even if we accept the fact that this is a kid show, that shouldn't be on there. And if it's supposed to be for adults, why? Why would you do that? What purpose does that serve? Anyway, I'm just gonna collect myself, alright. So, the first match we have is Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. Considering that you haven't seen Drew McIntyre on the show at all on either Raw or SmackDown in the past two to three months, who do you think won the match? Randy Orton wins with an RKO. And after the match, he RKO's him again. And then Mark Henry comes out and they start fighting each other. So they can build up to the third part of the Randy Orton-Mark Henry trilogy. The matches haven't really been that good anyway, so I'm sure part three will sell just as well as the first two. So, after they start fighting, and after, uh... After that, uh, Randy leaves after they separate. They get separated by, you know, security and all that jazz. Mark Henry stays up because he has a match with John Morrison, and as soon as I saw John Morrison come out, me and the people I was watching Raw with, knew that he was going to job, because that is all John Morrison does. He is a young, talented, athletic, exciting to watch, over with the fans, has fairly good mic skills, wrestling. So why wouldn't you parry him? I mean, there's no room for guys that are talented. He can't politic. So, fuck him. He loses in two minutes. I mean, yeah, he hit his starship pain, but Henry kicked out. And as soon as you get, your finisher gets kicked out of these days, you're pretty much done. <sighs> After that, backstage, we have the people who want to sue Triple H because he's doing a bad job. And, uh, they're all talking about what they're going to do. And, uh, Johnny Ace, sorry, John Laurinaitis comes there, and, you know, they all talk. And After everyone leaves, John Laurinaitis takes out his phone so he can text. Yes, in 2011, there is a wrestling angle that involves someone on the phone texting. After that, we have Kelly Kelly and Eve Torres versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia. This match stops at 35 seconds. Kelly Kelly gets tagged in, so does Beth. Kelly knocks her out of the ring, screams like a banshee that's been impaled, and keeps hitting her until the referee has no choice but to disqualify her for not listening to her instructions. That was the most shrill and annoying scream I'd ever heard since Vicky Rue. Who still works there? Good lord. Afterwards, Triple H and Don Laurinaitis have their whole backstage jab that they have to try and make Triple H the centerpiece of the show, in which point, John Laurinaitis says they should have a vote of no confidence out in the, on the show later, probably the main event. 
despite the fact that they don't know what a vote of confidence is, Triple H says sure. Then you get the uh, the DVD Blu-ray release of Fast Five, which they're showing because it has The Rock in it, and he'll be on the show next month. Then we have Jinder Mahal in the ring, and he gets cut off by Santino Morella, who's been gone for a while. He was hurt in a car wreck. They Santino makes fun of Jinder Mahal's language and um, says that he doesn't understand like what they're saying and they have a match and Santino beats him. Santino beats Jinder Mahal. That's a job. You uh, There's an ad for Brodius Clay who probably, if anyone even remembers who he is, he was last seen at Extreme Rules getting his head cut open. He's coming soon. And now, they show a video from Ms. and Our Truth on Ms.'s YouTube page. Yeah, they're using YouTube and Twitter now for this stuff. Doesn't make it look second rate at all, does it? Anyway, they basically say they're gonna lay assault charges against Triple H because he assaulted them last night after they gave up when the police arrested them for running out on the cage match, the Hell in a Cell match. I like the Miz, but anyway. After that, we have David Utunga, Christian, Cody Rhodes, Alberto Del Rio, Jack Swagger, and Dolph Ziggler versus John Cena, CM Punk, Sheamus, Mason Ryan, and Airstrike. This match actually wasn't that great. Um, oh, it was okay. I mean, I got a good amount of time. Uh, basically, Sheamus wins when he gets the bro kick on uh, Dolph Ziggler. It was pretty good. Uh, no complaints really. Everyone worked hard, they did well, there weren't many botches, so leave that alone now. Okay, so this is it. Afterwards, uh, the Divas come out on their own, and then the referees, and then the Raw guys, and then the SmackDown guys, and then the Raw guys, and the SmackDown guys. Why they all came out separately, I have no clue. <laughs> Even Jerry Lawler comes. He's back from his bleeding and what have you. So. Uh, anyway, you'll notice that when everyone comes out, you don't see Sheamus, or CM Punk, or Randy Orton, or uh, John Cena. Uh, Triple H basically says that uh, he's old school, and he likes to see people fight, and doesn't like to see them lawyer up, and blah, 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 blah. Saying that the universe, just, the WWE universe, is, decides, you know, who go he answers to them. He does all this for the fans, and all that crap that I don't believe. He basically wants to hear from the wrestlers. And the first person who talks is Wade Barrett. And Wade Barrett says that he doesn't think that they should be allowed to be in an environment that's unsafe because, you know, people getting beaten up any at any time when they don't work there is dangerous. And the only reason they let Wade Barrett say a word is that the Triple H could point out the irony that Wade Barrett arrived with the Nexus and was beating people up backstage in the parking lot and everywhere else. Contrived. Uh, oh, <laughs> After that, Mike Chioda, the referee, says he's never seen this much abuse on the referees in his life, and blah blah blah, even though referees get attacked all the time. As a matter of fact, there was a time when they were had scab referees because they were on strike. And Beth Phoenix destroys her character by saying, and I'm quoting now, we're girls. End quote. Basically saying that they're girls and they can't be expected to defend themselves or have any means of support against, you know, the evils of the Miz and our truth. They're girls. They're defenseless. They're weak. They're worthless. The one good diva they've had in the, in the Federation, not including Natalia, and she's ruined forever. She's now just another harmless chick in their eyes. This is sickening. Sickening. Anyway, uh, Triple H says that he fired the guys who were attacking the referees, and that's not, and th that should be good enough. And then the referees say that you know this could happen again, and blah blah blah. And then Christian says they should hold the vote. Um, Jerry also comes up and says that even though he doesn't think this is Triple H's fault, it's happening because of him, and as the thing that the mistakes he's made are not being taken out on everybody else. Um, 
They have the vote, Christian and the people he's with, they walk out. Jerry says he's walking out as well. People start to leave. Uh, the fans chant for Triple H as everyone's walking out on him. The referees have walked out. Um, Air Strike, Ryder, Watson, Morrison, and Riley are there. <laughs> Michael Cole leaves and no one even cares, they just boo him. Uh, anyway, those faces all leave, and then Booker T leaves, and the timekeeper, and even the cameramen put their cameras down and leave. Um, JR is at the announce table because he's only there because Triple H hired him back after he became COO, and he feels that he owes him his job. Then, he leaves too. Um... After everyone leaves, John Laurinaitis comes out, stares him down, shakes his head, and then leaves. We, after that, it's Triple H in the ring being cheered by the moron fans, and he just kind of looks. This is the most egotistical, self-righteous bullshit of an angle that I had ever seen. This ruined more people's characters than I have ever seen done possible. They are basically suggesting that Triple H is the single most important person in the WWE, more important than any of the wrestlers, the referees, the divas. You know, sickening. That's, yeah, I know I keep coming back to that, but I don't know what else to say. This was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Who cares? Triple H is not in... Yeah, you know what? Triple H is not important enough for any of this to matter. He's been on the job for two months max. And all of a sudden, I'm supposed to care whether or not he gets fired? Fuck him. Fuck him and his stupid long nose. Oh, my God. Like I said, Beth Phoenix's character's dead. Dead in the water. I don't see how anyone can take her seriously after that. The one who was terrorizing the divas and now saying she's a poor little girl and she can't be expected to defend herself. And why the hell were all the, the heels standing next to the faces? If they all hate each other, why weren't they fighting? And why the hell would the good guys walk out on Triple H anyway? Those are the ones that would want to stay and fight. And where the hell was Triple H, or uh, CM Punk, and John Cena, and Randy Orton, and Sheamus? What, are they too good not to show up to the company-wide meeting? What, are they too, like, I, I love how they're basically just saying those guys are so important that they don't even matter. Like, the rest of the roster, you know, they can get fired or whatever, walk out, doesn't matter. As long as we have those four guys, we're set. Fuck. You. Vince, or whoever the fuck wrote this, you should be goddamn ashamed of yourself, and I came this frigging close to just quitting this stupid-ass show. And anyone who knows me knows I, will, I have watched this through some pretty goddamn stupid shit. Oh. That's the end of the show. You know what, I mean, just... Uh, I just don't even mean this show pissed me off. I was gonna end on a funny joke like this. You are what you hate. You have become the New York Yankees. But even that joke can't clear me up. Fuck this show. Fuck Raw. Fuck Triple H. Fuck the WWE. Till next time, that wrestling guy. Oh. Till next time, guys. I'll catch you down the road. Snap into it.